Good day, Deep and Word family. Welcome to day 269 of our Bible study review. Today, we're closing out the book of Ezra with chapters 8 through 10. Now, we know from yesterday the decree from the king to support Ezra and all of those who decide to go back to the land of Jerusalem. Now, we see in chapter 8, verse 1, it says, Now these are the chiefs of the households of the fathers and the genealogical register of those who went up with me from Babylon in the reign of King Artaxerxes. And so it goes through all of the people who went with him. Let's skip to verse 15. It says, I gathered them together at the river that runs to Ahava, and we camped in tents for three days. As I examined the people and the priests, he says that he realizes that no one was there from the tribe of Levi. And so we see that he sent for discerning men and it says so that they would bring us ministering servants for the house of our Elohim because the good hand of Elohim was upon us indeed they brought us a man of understanding descending from the sons of Mali who was a descendant of Levi and so it says after this then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava that we might humble ourselves before our Elohim to seek from him a good route for us and for our little ones and for all of our substance. And so we see that even on the move, they would not make moves without involving him. They sought him for everything on their way back home. And not only that, y'all, he wanted to do things properly by way of the true priesthood from the tribes of Levi. And so we see that he didn't want to ask the king for escorts or anything extra. He wanted to have the protection from their Elohim alone. After this, we see that Ezra separated the priests, 12 of them, so that they can handle the holy vessels that came from Babylon to bring them up to Jerusalem. As you know, the priesthood is called to handle the holy Things. He says, you are the holy priesthood, you handle the holy vessels. Let's pick up in verse 31. It says, then we began the journey from the Ahava River on the 12th day of the first month to go to Jerusalem. The hand of our Elohim was upon us and he delivered us from the hand of an attacker and of the ambusher along the way. When we arrived at Jerusalem, we stayed there three days days. Then on the fourth day, the silver and the gold and the vessels were weighed out in the house of our Elohim. Verse 34, all of it was counted by number and by weight, and all of the information was recorded at that time. It says, then the children of the exile who came out of captivity offered burnt offerings unto the Elohim of Israel. And at the end of this chapter, we see that Ezra makes sure that all of the king's decrees are handed to all of the governors, you know, beyond the province of the river so that they knew that what they are doing is supported by the king's decree. Now we walk into chapter 9 and we see that there's an issue of intermarriage between the children of Israel with all of the peoples of the land who commit abominations. And so this is how Ezra is going to deal with it. But let's start reading from verse 1. It says, Now when these things were done, the leaders contacted me saying, The people of Israel, the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the lands. They practice the abominations of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, and the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. Specifically, they have taken some of their daughters as wives for themselves as well as their sons, so that the holy seed that has been mingled with the people of the land. In fact, the involvement of the leaders and rulers has been foremost in this vile behavior. So it's mainly the leaders, the priests who should know better, who have been partaking in these activities. And so intermarrying with other peoples is not the issue. The issue is the abominations that they commit. Now, what he calls an abomination is an abomination, and we are to separate ourselves for his holy purposes. It's no different today. You shall not yoke yourself up with someone who does Satan's work. If you do, you will be compromised and then the witness of the kingdom will slowly start diminishing within his people. Let's pick up in verse 3. Ezra says, when I heard this, I tore my clothes and my robe. 
plucked out the hair from my head and from my beard and sat down astonished because of the vile behavior of those who had been in exile. Everyone that had trembled at the words of Elohim of Israel gathered to me, but I sat astonished until the evening sacrifice. At the evening sacrifice, I rose up from my heaviness and despite having my clothes torn and my robe torn, I knelt on my knees and stretched out my hands in prayer to Yahuwah, my Elohim. And so we see that he intercedes on behalf of the people and he is ashamed. He's like, this is the very reason why we were put in exile in the first place is because Israel started mingling with the other peoples. Now, you don't have to go back very far to remember that King Solomon, he married several women from all across the lands and they all performed their abominations to their gods. And what did they do? They influenced him to serve their gods, aka their demons. And so we see that Ezra is ashamed that the people have not learned a doggone thing. Ezra prays to Yahuwah. He says, I'm ashamed to even come to you with the same thing that got us here in the first place. And he says, should we break your commandments and intermarry with the people of these abominations? Would you not become so completely angry with us that there would be no remnant or anyone who escapes? He says, oh, Yahuwah, Elohim of Israel, you are righteous for we who have escaped exile yet remain to this very day. Here we stand before you in our guiltiness, even though we should not stand before you at all because of this. Now we walk into chapter 10. It says, Now while Ezra prayed and confessed, weeping and prostrating himself before the house of Elohim, a very large congregation of men, women, children gathered around him from Israel, for the people too wept bitterly. Shechaniah, the son of Jehiel, one of the sons of Elam, answered and said to Ezra, We have acted with vile unfaithfulness against our Elohim and have wedded foreign women from the people of of the land. Yet there is now hope in Israel concerning this. Now, therefore, let us make a covenant with our Elohim to sever relations with all of the women and their children, according to the counsel of my Lord and those who tremble at the commandment of our Elohim. May this be done in accordance with the Torah. Arise for this matter is your responsibility, but we are standing with you. Be courageous and act. Verse 5. Then Ezra stood and made the presiding Levitical priests in all Israel to swear an oath to act according to this word. Down to verse 7. They made a proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem for all of the children of the exile to assemble in Jerusalem. Whoever would not come within three days would forfeit all of his possessions according to the counsel of the leaders and elders and would himself be excluded from the congregation of the exiles. So if they didn't come, then they would be forced out of the land. They would be kicked out of the covenant promises. And so it says in verse nine, then all of the men of Judah and Benjamin gathered themselves together to Jerusalem within three days. Now in verse 10, it says, Ezra, the priest stood up and said to them, you have acted unfaithfully by bringing home foreign women, adding to the guilt of Israel. Now, therefore, make confession to Yahuwah Elohim of your fathers and do what pleases him. Sever your relationships with the people of the land, especially from the foreign women. Now down to the middle of verse 16, it says, Ezra the priest selected men, heads of the father's households. So he selected one leader from each tribe to go in and to investigate this matter of all of the men who intermarried with all of these women who perform abominations. And it says, they sat down from the first day of the 10th month to examine the matter and finish dealing with every man who had married foreign women by the first day of the first month. And then we see that there's a list of all of the men who wanted to, you know, continue to do what they did that got them in the exile in the first place. So yes, many of them severed their marriages to these foreign women, even to the children that came out of those marriages. And a lot of people, when they read these passages, you know, they take it as a hard thing. Like, does our Elohim not allow people to intermarry? Absolutely, he allows it. But if they have not separated themselves from the uncleanliness of abominations, then absolutely not. Even our Messiah says it. Do not knowingly yoke yourself up 
with an unbeliever. Because if that's the stronger party and you're under their yoke, they're going to pull you away. They're going to pull you away from your Elohim and from your covenant promises. If it happened to the wisest man in all of Israel, King Solomon, it can happen to you too. If they have given themselves over completely to the one true El, then there's nothing to fear. He does not care about skin color. Israel was always a mixed multitude. So this has absolutely nothing to do with skin color. It has everything to do with worship. Deep and Word family, that's all that I have for you today. Until tomorrow, Yah bless.